Hey, we're back for a brand new episode of Bible Reading and Coffee Drinking. Today, we're talking about 1 Peter 4. It's a lot about suffering and sacrifice the way Christ did and how we're going to kind of feel some of that in our lives as we get closer and closer to Him. There's also some instructions about loving one another and how we should be treating one another and the differences between kind of suffering for Christ and then kind of suffering for self-induced sinful behavior that we have. It's a good episode. Make sure you stay till the end. I got some good questions from the audience that I'm going to read and answer. So let's get started. First Peter 4. Let's go. All right, thanks for uh, joining me for a brand new episode of Bible Reading and Coffee Drinking. Today, we are reading 1 Peter 4. So this is in the New Testament for those who are maybe new to the Bible. It's all the way in the back with all these letters that were written. Uh, we got past the Paul's letters, right? All the epistles of Paul. Now we're into the James and 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, all those. So today we're in 1 Peter 4 is what we're going to read. All right, today is uh, the last Friday of April. I can't believe uh, time has gone by so fast this year. Uh, a couple things to be aware of. Um, we have a sale going on, kind of a blowout sale on my site, livingchristian.org. All the apparel, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, all that stuff is 20% off. Use the code SPRING at checkout. That sale ends next Tuesday, I believe it is, April the 30th. Uh, so if you're watching this live uh, or listening to it afterwards, uh, make sure you check out livingchristian.org and hit that code SPRING at checkout to get 20% off uh, between now and next Tuesday, April the 30th. And also Monday is the last episode of the month. I can't believe it. And usually uh, on we've done that new this year. Uh, we're doing Mailbag Monday. Uh, which is kind of a fun way that I ask or I answer a lot of questions from my audience. Uh, and if you're following me on Instagram or Twitter or subscribe to my email newsletter, uh, I did a survey earlier this week. I had a bunch of questions on there. I think there's 10 uh, questions. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the summary of a few of those results. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun. I ask random questions about Christian movies and music and what denomination you are and if you have any questions for me. So I'm going to use that as uh, some of the basis of Monday's episode. Of course, we'll read a little scripture as well, but that'll be fun. It'll be a fun episode on Monday. So check that out if you uh, if you want to watch live on Instagram. Join me Monday morning at 8 a.m. Central or just watch it on YouTube or the podcast afterwards. All right, enough of that. Let's dive into 1 Peter 4, a sip of coffee, and let's dive into this uh, wonderful chapter. All right, it kicks off with uh, what Peter says is living for God. All right, so let's get, uh, let's get to it here. Uh, verse 1, so then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourself with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, and you'll be anxious to do the will of God. You've had enough of the past things, evil things, that godless people enjoy, their immortality, immorality, excuse me, immortality, what am I reading? Their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. So, all right, what's Paul telling us here? Christ suffered physically on the cross, okay? And we, in turn, as followers of Christ, we need to kind of suffer as well, right? Whether it's physically or whether that is spiritually or emotionally, we are going to suffer a little bit as we join Christ, as we follow Christ, as we try to live as Christ does. So what does that mean? If we're followers of Christ and we join in his suffering, and we eliminate sin in our life, we're going to get rid of things like chasing our own desires, right? We'll be anxious. I love that. You'll be anxious to do the will of God. Your perspective in life is going to change. You're going to change from wanting to be drunk and lust and wild parties and worshiping idols and chasing our own desires. We're going to change our perspective of life to be anxious to do the will of God. We, we're going to want to do the will of God. Our desires are going to change on how we live our life. So think about that as you go about your day, and are we living for the world, or are we living for Christ? And if you are a follower of Christ, you're going to change perspectives. 
Uh, and that's going to result in a little bit of suffering. Not the way Christ did on the cross, but suffering in the eyes of this world. Uh, we're going to have to sacrifice things that we perceive to give us uh, happiness and joy and fulfillment. We're going to have to sacrifice that in order to do the will of God. And in the grand scheme of eternity, it's not a sacrifice, but we'll feel like it is. We'll feel like we're suffering uh, on this earth today. Verse 4, of course your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things that they do. Uh, so they slander you. But remember that they will, ha- I love this part, remember that they will face, they will have to face God who stands ready to judge everybody, both the living and the dead. That is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead. So although they were destined to die like other people, they now live in the God, with God in the Spirit. So he's going, he is admitting and trying to get us to understand when we follow Christ, we are going to lose some things. We're going to lose some freedoms and some desires of this world. And part of that possibly may be some friends of ours or people that we perceive to be friends. They're not going to understand why you're going through these changes, why you're living in God, why you're not going to parties or not lusting after people or not getting drunk all the time, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, They're not going to understand why, so you may lose some friends. But in reality, God hears things that we can't hear. He makes moves. We won't move. So allow him to do that. There's a reason why people leave your life. There's a reason why uh, as you grow older and hopefully grow closer to God, your your circle changes, if that makes sense. There's a reason for that, and God has a purpose for that. Even though we may not understand it at the time, even though we may it may kind of hurt at the time, uh, I promise you God's got a reason. Verse 7, the end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Most importantly of all, Continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. All right, sip of coffee and let's chat about that. So Peter is openly talking about the end of the world, right? And what does that mean in that context? It means a couple of things. It could mean a couple of things. One, he could be referencing the fact that, you know, Jesus did admit that he was going to come back and this world as we know it would end. So Peter's still living in that knowledge because uh, a firsthand knowledge of those words. So in his mind, maybe he thought at the time that uh, before he died, uh, you know, the world will end. But they also... The other perspective is, in reality, the world will end for all of us in this realm, in this perspective. Uh, Whether it's when Jesus comes back and we go through the book of Revelation, or we just pass away in the normal cycle of life. I know nobody wants to hear about that and talk about it, but the reality of it is, uh, at some point, this quote-unquote world, this life, will end for all of us uh, in uh, one of two ways. Either we pass away, or or we're, uh, you know, called up and uh, fight the battles with the good Lord. But what he's saying, until that time happens, until we leave this earth, right, we need to continue to show deep love for each other because love covers a multiple multitude of sins. We need to take care of one another, okay? We have to take care of one another. Verse 10 says this, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So with that love that you have for other people, right? God has given you a skill set, a spiritual gift, so to speak, to, to use to better this world. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever Amen. All right. So no matter what your gift is, we all have spiritual gifts, whether we realize them or not. Uh, I I firmly feel that even this, for me, is a spiritual gift. Uh, uh, God has given me the the ability to manage social media accounts, uh, you know, speak in a way and read the Bible and come up with ways to, um, you know, encourage people and bring them closer to Jesus. Uh, I've historically been a marketing professional for most of my, all my career. 
And, and so I have the gift of creativity. Uh, and so I'm using those gifts now um, and, and to glorify God. And that's what he wants us to do. It doesn't matter whether it's a skill set you use at work or at school or in your normal life. Are you a good listener? Are you a good speaker? Uh, whatever that may be. Are you caring? Right. Uh, <clears throat> whatever. Are you a good cook? <laughs> whatever that may be, you have a skill that God has given you that he wants you to use to help other people and to show them that you love them as well as glorify God. OK. All right. Let's uh, sip a coffee and we'll continue in verse 12. Suffering for being a Christian. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad, for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it's revealed to the earth. So don't be surprised. And this goes back. We've had these conversations before. The closer you get to Christ, the... Um, harder life can be sometimes certainly the harder the devil works against you uh he you know you're going to be tested uh whether that's your faith being tested or your resolve is not always necessarily coming from god more than likely it's coming from this world and from the devil who doesn't want you that close to jesus he does he's scared to death of losing you uh to christ uh so you're going to go through fiery trials as peter talks about right but be happy for those trials because it shows that you're not of this world. It shows that you're fighting against the evils of this world, okay? The trials that you're going through uh, have a couple of different purposes. Uh, on one hand, it's going to hopefully bring you closer to God because you're going to know that you rely on Him and need to rely on Him to get through these trials. It also shows you that the devil is just absolutely irritated by your relationship <laughs> with Jesus. So that's a good thing. All right, that is a good thing. Let's continue in verse 14. If you have insulted, if you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed for the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, it, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or prying into other people's affairs. Okay, the reason why he mentions that there is the trials we're talking about. The world's fighting against you. The devil is fighting against you. But... Don't self-sabotage yourself into sin. So if you're going through trials, if you're suffering because you've murdered somebody or stealed things or made trouble or prying in other, if you're, if you're actively sinning against other people, right, then that is kind of some self-reliance and self-perspective that you need to have. Because if you suffer because of the fact that you're doing things against people, then that's a whole nother issue is what he's saying. You need to be treating others with love, as he talked about at the beginning. It covers a multitude of sins. You have to love and treat each other with respect and care. What you don't need to do is actively go against other people, murdering, stealing, making trouble, etc. That is self-sabotage and self-induced sin and chaos that we need to uh, avoid. All right. Verse 16 says this, but it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his name for the for the time has come for judgment and it must be must begin with God's household. And if judgment begins with us, what terrible fate awaits those who never obeyed God's good news? And also if the righteous are bare, barely saved, what will happen to the godless sinner? So what he's differentiating here is the suffering for being a Christ follower Right? And the suffering for being in the world and actively sinning against other people. Those are two different types of suffering. Those are two different types of trials. Those are two different types of pain. So if you're suffering and you're having a hard time uh, with, and you're being challenged and persecuted because of your relationship with Christ, you should enjoy that because you know what? You are saved. You're going to be judged just like everybody else. But He's talking about the fact that how blessed are we to be judged because of the fact that we're followers of Christ. Imagine how bad it's going to be, how terrible it's going to be when the people are judged that aren't followers of Christ or people that reject Christ, okay? All right, verse 19 wraps it up. So if you're suffering in a manner that pleases God, keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to the God who created you for he will never 
fail you. All right? So if you're suffering because you're a Christian in the sense of you're sacrificing, you're going through trials, uh, this world is battling against you because of your relationship with Christ, keep on keeping on. Keep on doing what is right because we need to trust God has a plan. Trust God with our lives because he created us and he will never fail us. Amen to that, huh? Amen to that. All right, that's a great uh, word, First uh, Peter 4. Uh, let's, uh, let's ask some questions now. As a reminder, before we get to the Q&A part of this podcast episode, uh, Monday's uh, episode is going to be a lot of fun. I do a lot of Q&A on that. I'm going to answer a lot of the, the summary of the questions from that survey. So join me on Monday. Uh, I've been doing that all year long at the last Monday of the month, and it's a fun episode. I always like that episode. Uh, so we'll say have a sip of coffee here. I'll take a couple of questions. <clears throat> so if you have a question, if you're live with me on Instagram, make sure you put it on the bottom uh, in the little question area, uh, and I'll read a couple, whether it's about 1 Peter 4 or whether it's about anything. I like to answer any question. All right, sip of coffee. Let's dive into some Q&A here. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, I like to read the first one, as you guys know, uh, and it's not a question. It's from Crystal, not a question. Just want to thank you. My mom died when I was 16, and I've always so angry, but God never let me left me. I came across your Instagram somehow, and you really uh, made such a difference in my life, helping guide me back to Jesus. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Crystal. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. It's not a question, but I, I, I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, that is for sure, and uh, it's all about Jesus. It's not about me. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just doing a little bit of what he asked me to do, and uh, so if you found me somehow, you have in all caps. Uh, it, it was certainly a God thing, and God is moving in your life. Uh, we call that a God moment uh, in my family. Uh, we can look back at uh, our lives. I, I do it quite frequently. I'll look back on different aspects of my life and changes in my life, and realize that God was kind of moving in my life at that moment. Um, and, and sometimes you don't realize it, right? But sometimes you look back and you're like, hey, that's a God moment. That's a God moment. Only, only, you know, God moved and intervened into my life in that moment. So maybe he interviewed, intervened in your life and you brought, uh, he brought you to this Instagram page. So I appreciate it. I'm glad I'm making a little bit of a difference in your life. God bless you. And, uh, and I love you very much. All right. Do, uh, does he forgive you for sins against other people? All right, Deanna, that was a good question. He did, we just talked about that, right? Uh, Peter is instructing us to um, love one another and not sin against other people. Now, the question you ask is, does God forgive us for that? All Peter is laying out is the fact that that is uh, when you're suffering for Christ, it's not sinful behavior. If you're doing the other things, sinning, and you're sinning against other people, you're hurting other people, that is sinful behavior. So dissecting your question is, the real question is you're asking is, does God forgive us for our sinful behavior? And in this instance, against other people, uh, he, he can and he will if you ask him to, and you follow Christ and dedicate your life to Jesus, and you repent from those sins. And what does repent mean? Repent means you disavow that sin, and you turn away from it, okay? Um, and that's that's the challenging part. So it is actually trying to sin no more in that. And there's many instances and many kind of uh, discussions and, and kind of stories in the New Testament where Jesus tells somebody, to go and sin no more. That's a very, it's a common thing for his perspective to be. And what can we learn from that? I mean, he surrounded himself with sinners, with prostitutes and tax collectors and cheats and liars, uh, but he changed them. He told them to go and sin no more. Uh, so that's what we need to do. So to answer your question, yes, he will forgive you for sinning against other people, but you've got to repent for it. You've got to go to God and ask for forgiveness, and he will forgive you. There's only one sin in the Bible that uh, is referenced as the unforgivable sin, and that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that doesn't mean you're using bad language or, or talking bad about God. Uh, the common uh, you know, kind of um, rationale on what that means is the rejection of Christ. Uh, so you are rejecting Christ, and you're blasphemed, uh, blaspheming the Holy Spirit because you're not accepting the Holy Spirit 
uh, to fill you after giving your life to Christ. So that's kind of what how I read it, and a lot of people do read it, uh, is the fact that the the most the only unforgivable sin is the absolute rejection of Jesus and turning away from him. Okay. So that's what that means. Anyways, but yes, he will forgive you. All right, let's have a sip of coffee and take another question here. All right, can you touch on your thoughts on the spiritual gifts the charismatic Pentecostal churches seem to focus on? I believe in them, but it seems they require uh, focus on such. I, I, I don't have the same perspective as kind of the Pentecostal church on the uh, spiritual gifts. They get into some uh, stuff like speaking in tongues and different things like that. I think it's simpler than that. Maybe I'm just a simple guy, right? Uh, maybe I'm just uh, a little bit uh, uh, more simple-minded uh, than some of those uh, individuals. Uh, I, I, When I read that, as we read today in 1 Peter 4, when I read the fact that God gives us spiritual gifts, I think that that is a wide range of skill sets that that could be. Now, Peter references, if you're good at speaking, go out and preach the word. If you're good at whatever that may be. So in my mind, it could go into uh, whether it is some of the gifts that I have, uh, whether it's a skill set gift, uh, such as being a creative person or doing graphic design. Uh, I, I've always loved to write, uh, so I write blogs on my website. I think that's those are spiritual gifts. Those are gifts from God that I can use spiritually to glorify Him. But it can be as simple something as simple as being a compassionate person or a good listener. Therefore, you go and you are a good listener and you help people out by helping them work through their problems. Uh, so whether that's a spiritual gift of uh, of healing to where you want to be a doctor or nurse or a, a spiritual gift of listening and rationale where you want to be a counselor or a psychologist or it's something as simple as maybe you have a spiritual gift for working with your hands uh, and you can go out and be a farmer uh, and provide food. Uh, there's a lot of different ways uh, you can serve and, and so to speak, uh, a lot of different ways you can glorify God with Whatever skill set that you have, and in my mind, that is a spiritual gift, whether it's a mental spiritual gift or a physical spiritual gift, I think those gifts come from God, and He wants us to use them to glorify Him and to love each other. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm a little, I don't get too bogged down into some of the uh, denominational kind of spiritual gifts where they get really, really specific to where you may be able to speak in tongues or this, that, and the other. I think it's broader than that. I think everybody's got spiritual gifts if they just tap into them and use them for God. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's take one more question here. Uh, do you have to get baptized to go to heaven? You know what, Dan, I'm going to talk about that on Monday. I was one of the questions I asked on the survey, and I think I got some interesting results. So I want to talk about what I think as well as what everybody else thinks uh, on Monday. All right, how's my daughter? Uh, I'll answer that one first. I, I talked to her at the beginning of the episode. So for those who are just joining or, or made it to the, the end of this episode, um, my daughter had surgery on Monday. She's doing well, uh, doing well. We had... Um, you know, it, it was it was decent surgery. It's going to be a, a week or so, week or two of recovery. So she's laying around uh, recovering. She's doing good though. She's doing good though. God is good. We certainly prayed through it. Uh, prayed for the doctors. Prayed for the anesthesiologists. Prayed for healing. And uh, of course, God delivers. He always does, right? Uh, so she's doing good. Uh, a little bit of pain, but uh, she's recovering and she's going to be just fine. Uh, so thank you for asking for that. Uh, I, I had a lot of direct messages on uh, Instagram. I got some emails as well asking how she was doing, I guess, for the people who saw my uh, uh, podcast episode or the live on Monday. So I, if, in reality, I'm so blessed to have you guys uh, as part of my spiritual family here, okay? I feel like Bible, or I feel like living Christians, a little bit of a community here. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, a couple of million followers across the, the different platforms, but in reality, it is a, a little community that we got going on here. I know that sounds like a ridiculously large number, but uh, I, I see and, and hear from a lot of the same people all the time, and uh, I read uh, as many direct messages as I can and emails as I can, <clears throat> and um, it's so heartwarming to know that uh, you guys uh, took the time out of your life um, to pray for my daughter. And, and um, it's not lost on me. I'll just say that. Um, God bless you guys. And I really appreciate it. And it, uh, it, me it meant a lot to me. And, uh, and, and it worked. Okay. And it always works, right? God listens. Uh, and so I appreciate it uh, so much. 
uh, I, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, all joking. I mean, I don't, I joke a lot. You guys don't know me that well personally, but <clears throat> I'm kind of a, a cut up in many ways. I, I joke a lot, but I do get serious when I talk about uh, God, and I do get serious when I talk about my family. So I, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys so much for asking about my daughter and for praying for her. Thank you very much. All right, let's have a sip of coffee, and we'll uh, wrap this episode up with a quick prayer and get about a weekend. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us together today. The words of Peter that come from you, that are inspired and, 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 and are breathed through Peter from, from you, is telling us about our suffering that we're going to have. We know that we're going to have sacrifices. We know that we're going to have pain and trials and tribulations in this world, but we also know that Jesus said he's overcome this world, and we believe that. So we know that these trials, these suffering, this pain that we may feel is worldly and temporary, Lord. And we're listening to you, and we know and we understand the difference between trials because we follow you and because we dedicate our life to you, and trials in the sense of we are doing it to ourselves, Lord. And, and help us have the strength to battle the trials and, and uh, defend ourselves from the trials of because of being a Christian, they also give us the strength and the understanding to avoid the trials that are self-sabotaging. We, we, we need the, the clarity to not to hurt one another, but only love one another. And this world needs so much more love than it has right now. It's a mess down here, Lord. And I know you've got a good plan. I know you've got a long-term perspective about what's going on right now. But right now, we've made a mess of this world that we live in, and we're all suffering a little bit. We have faith in you, and we trust you, and we give our lives to you. But help us love one each other, love one another the way you love us. That is the challenge that we are accepting from you, Lord. Please be with everybody watching or listening to this episode. And thank you, Lord, for bringing them into my Christian family. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Hey, don't miss Monday's episode live here or on the podcast and YouTube. Uh, we're going to have a fun time reading some of those questions that you guys sent in, as well as kind of going through just some uh, random some summaries of some of the questions I ask you guys, uh, such as, is baptism required for heaven? What's your favorite uh, Christian movie? All that good. It's going to be a good time. So join me on Monday. Uh, and until then, uh, have a great weekend. Keep Jesus on your heart and forever on your mind. Love you guys.